tiger on the prowl. I'ma make it go wild. I'm original, and I told you so. I'm a kid in a candy store with the leather on the denim. I ain't the cure, I'm the venom. If you wanna find me, find the taillights. Something's coming in, you're gonna wanna take a red eye. It's time to go. It's time to go. Get ready. What? What the Sam Hill look? I don't know what's happening here, but at least you're here. I'm here. It's Kaylee Down. It's What Up Wednesday, and you are the third team and my favorite people in the world. Don't tell the others. Don't tell the others. They'll be all really upset. Things are looking a little bright. Um, it stopped snowing for a brief minute, so let's see how this does. Oh yeah, I know what's happening here. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this there. That probably looks a little more saturated. There we are. Um, oh, excuse me. We're off to a just a, a fantastic start. So, you know, when things like this happen, the best thing to do is just to go straight into the content. So, topics. We're gonna talk about taking too long on a penalty stroke, a goalkeeper tackle, another goalkeeper tackle, um, goalkeeper removing their helmet, I'm talking more quickly than usual. What do we do with this question mark? Faking versus intimidation and playing advantage off a defender's body. And if we have time, I may have a bonus for you. Look, I don't want to make any promises, but there we are. Um, let's see. I'll start off with giving some flowers because it makes me happy. I don't know if they are in the crowd. Actually, maybe I'll scan through the welcomes and just make sure um, Mike and Dean. Whoa! <laughs> Dean, you think you're excited? Did you not just see what happened to my face when I saw you were saying you were new? Oh my God. Thank you for coming. This is fantastic. Uh, Niels is here. Mike, yeah, but we, you know. Um, William, William is here. I don't want to call you Will yet unless you give me explicit permission, okay? Because I know some people really like their names and they, you know. Luke's here. And uh, we were all, several of us were just chatting in the tailgate in the Discord. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about the Discord, um, it is, wait a minute, is it this thing? Let's do this thing. This is the Discord. <laughs> complete with a really tacky shirt and and a Shit's Creek gif because that is the acceptable gif. That is the acceptable gif of all gifing in the FH Empire server. I like to tell other people about it and how proud I am that you guys are so good at selecting your Shit's Creek gifs. But there you are, the Discord. If you haven't joined yet, 
it is a free community. So you can pop in there and you can just chat with us and find out what's going on. You can get answers to particular questions. And sometimes I take the questions that are being posed in the Discord and I bring them up right here to What Up Wednesday because that's how we roll. Also, it's really great to be able to get material for shows every week from you because you guys are awesome that way. Okay, um, right, flowers. That's what I was gonna do before I distracted myself and everything got all off track, but I cannot be distracted from this fine human being right here. Steven Denman got his level one assessment last week. Hang on, where's my... Okay, now first of all, you might be saying, Keely, what's the big whoop? What's the big whoop about level one? Okay, let me tell you something about this, this fine human here. Not only a terrific musician, but he's a goalkeeper. And he came into our community as a goalkeeper, had not umpired a day in his life. He just wanted to know more. He wanted to know about the, more about the rules, all that sort of thing. And over time, over time, we wore him down and we got him on board. And now, you guys, this is the change that we want to see in the world is players just joining us and becoming one of us. So Stephen, your progress means more to me than you'll ever know because being able to build our community from people who weren't, who now are umpires just that's everything. So congratulations. And uh, I can't wait to see how you progress into the future. Okay. Uh, let's, let's get into some topics. Maybe depending if I get distracted again, I probably will because Hartmut's here and I'm always excited to see Hartmut. So, uh, obviously, and Yop is here and big warm welcome from Rachel. That's very good. It's, it, it is dance time. Should I change the music? It's been a long time we've been on um, Get Ready. So, thoughts. Um, Rachel's running a little low. That's never about, never a good sign. Scott Riley's here, as always. Thank you so much, Scott, for being here. Really appreciate it. Yes, Gary, you're here. Gary is one of our newest green members. I featured him last week. He may not have known, but if you go back to the replay last week, Gary, like your name comes up, so. Uh, there you go. I'm really glad you're here and looking forward to getting to know you in the Discord. Get in there. It's really not that scary. Honestly. Honestly. It's not. Um, yeah, my... I do look a little more white. You're absolutely right. And that's because the ISO is probably set too high. Am I gonna have to change this? Maybe I'll try to do it later. Okay my face cam. Uh, Tristan's here. Ben. Hola. Stanley? Stanley? I think it's been a long time since you've been around. So I'm very pleased that you're here and therefore will sound a sound effect in your honor. Mm, drop. Thank you for dropping in. Oh, that was bad. I will never, ever do that again. Goalkeeper of Wednesday. Yes, that's the new one. You answer in all variations. There you go. Oh, hi. Gretchen is here stopping by to uh, check in on the hijinks that is the FH Empires community. Everybody warm welcome for her because she's one of my uh, gangster friends and my creative uh, mentoring groups. So uh, it's really nice for her to be there. And look at that. Oh my goodness. Somebody's me. <laughs> yeah, I love it, Kat. This is awesome. Shits, yes. So Ted Lasso is the is the second place. This this screen is driving me crazy. I will fix it in a second. Um, Ted Lasso is the second place GIF that is permitted. Okay. And let's see. Um, yeah, chat with us. This is great. <laughs> this I have a moderator doing stuff today, and it's Cat, and she's great. Like what a what a great picture, wasn't it? So this is the problem for all of you. If I find you in Facebook, 
and you do something amazing, I am going to find my favorite picture and I'm just going to pull it up because if you put it on Facebook, I figure it's okay here. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I should be careful about that. You're absolutely right. Uh, big celebrations. This is fantastic. Love the goalkeeper says nails. Graham's hair. Fantastic. Oh, I keep forgetting cat because you're, you're such a firm, like you're blazing in my mind as an umpire. So I always forget. Yes. How many, how many of y'all, cause it's not me, our goalkeepers. I would, I'm going to guesstimate right now on this. You cat, you could always set up a poll spontaneously if you wanted. How many of you are current or ex goalkeepers? Answer the poll. Let's find out what happens. Nick is, Nick is here, but you're in the Netherlands. Congratulations. And also, does that mean you're going to go back over there for the EHL getaway weekend with FHE3T Yellow? Oh, wait, is that a good time to talk about? Might be a good time to talk about Yellow. Why not? Let's do it. Okay. This is FHU, FHU3T Yellow, and the other thing didn't come up. FHU. 3t.com is the link. These are the membership tiers. $7 green support, $27 a month for mentorship and coming with us to EHL if you want. Okay. Goalkeepers do make the best umpires. We're all aware. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. Um, there you go. And you would. And I, hi, Karen. Karen, you're famous because now you're on YouTube. She's probably going, oh my God, why did she say my name? People are nice. What can I do? Oh, it was very bad. Okay. <laughs> Good work, Shane. Oh, Matt Jones is here. Good to see you, Allie. Holy smokes. I forget that there's a lot of you. So I'm just, I just want to say hi to everybody. And now I'm delaying the getting into the material. I apologize. Matt's here and Taco and your current goalkeeper. See, everybody's going to start declaring declaring goalkeeper. Um, do I say, do I pronounce it Vanus? Did I do that right? Let me know in the comments. And an X and a, there you go. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Oh, you know what? I need to bring up my studio properly or else I'm not gonna know when polls are running. And that would be terrible. Okay, stream finished. Here. Okay. <laughs> Cat, we're pro well, we're we're going to we're going to wrap up this poll and see what the results were. Let's see. End poll. Umpire only at the moment. Hopefully you all voted already. Otherwise, you're going to be sad, but we have a poll for the first topic, so I have to I have to stop this right now. Okay. So here are the results. St strictly dancing only, strictly umpiring, 46%. Goalkeepers, 26%. Outfield, 26%. Coach, zero. Good work, you guys. Not surprised at all that there are so many goalkeepers in this. Okay, let's get this party started. I've been faffing about too much. Here's our first topic. Taking too long on a penalty stroke. Very, very well. And go ahead and watch, and I'm going to fix my ISO. Shot. Come in there. Open blank. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. So you're Wang looking for the penalty corner. And a look at. Yep. So it's uh, the first referral we have of this uh, game. Yeah, you can see he was pushed off the ball then, but uh, we're not going to decide. I wanted you to see just all the context to the play, that there was an extensive delay beforehand. Explaining the situation then. And he was the stroke, in fact. That's the advice I have. That's the advice. That is why they've given 
it as a stroke. And up stands uh, Zhang Jiang, the goal scorer of uh, the Dribble Star. First and only goal. Yes, but talking about faffing about. To make it 2 0. <laughs> Hang on. No. No. That's too, too long. Too long. Too long. Oh. Too long. Bevan Nickel not long. Happy, happy with that. You know, like too long. He was saying he took too long to take that stroke. To bring it up. Yeah, too long. What? Yes. Too long. And Whistle. Korea lose it. A golden opportunity to make it 2-0. Given away just like that because he took so long to take the penalty stroke according to Bevan Nickel, the New Zealand umpire. Okay, so I just have the replay of the stroke now, but I, I wanted you to see what happened, and and it it's interesting because every decision that umpires make, I like to try to couch a little bit more in the whole game when I can, because their mental state, whether they're in a calm place, whether it's late in the game and they've had a lot of dissent and maybe appeals and video referrals and, and things like that on their mind, I watch at lower levels, I, I watch to see how umpires respond to their own mistakes because they often know their mistakes just as well as, as anyone else and how they respond to that kind of uh, situation is really telling for me about you know where they are in their mental development such like that. So I wanted you to see what led up to that, which is that it was a big decision where I think potentially Bevan saw an overreaction by the attacking player and on referral that gets turned around and not just a little bit turned around it, it could have only been a penalty stroke it either was absolutely a foul or it was a penalty stroke or absolutely a free hit defense or a stroke but the fact that it wasn't even just a a play on situation where the tackle had come in and the player had gone down and and he decided to play on, it was actually a, a free hit the other way. So that was was a very strong decision, which puts, puts an umpire in this state quite under it. Like there's, now there's a lot going on. And then steps up uh, the, uh, the uh, an attacker to take the penalty stroke and he's got to make a decision. I think that one thing that provoked this particular decision was the amount of movement the goalkeeper did. So I'm going to talk about this more next week when I do a full indoor show, but seeing that feints or sorry, breaking early by defenders on penalty corners can be induced by delay on taking an injection or taking a penalty stroke is one of the reasons why we're now looking at that more carefully and it's starting to pop up in the briefings and the guidance a little bit more so i'm interested in your thoughts um hopefully cat can pop up that that poll for you and um and then we'll see what happens okay um let's see ben there's two reasons for goalkeepers being umps goalkeeping is boring two you used to seeing the whole pitch from wider angle okay I can't speak to number one, but I can certainly uh, I can certainly get on board with number two. There you go. And let's say, how dare someone call you at 701? I don't know. It's terrible. Um, uh, th this is every time. They're just under disguise. They're in disguise, Mike. There you go. Hi, Alan. Good to see you. Left backs. Yes, yes, I was a left back. Thank you very much, Alan Dow. You won. Ha, how you like that? Okay. There you go. Um, let's see. You should have been a goalkeeper with your size. It would have been less awkward. Well, maybe. Wonka's back. Hey, friend. Hola, como estas? And you're watching Argentina versus Poland. Oh, sorry, sport ball. I know it's the World Cup of sport ball right now, but it's still sport ball. OT, OT, yes, and I was faffing about. Okay, so where are you at? Uh, yes, so some of you, oh, you gave your opinion on the Discord. Okay, did we did we talk about this? On, oh yes, we did. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that, Luke, and, and there'll be a couple of um, 
topics coming up that have been discussed in the server. So if you have, it's just kind of nice, especially if I've chimed in, it's really nice to let everybody else, you know, get their thoughts out and things like that. This is definitely a learning situation for you. Yep, I like that. Wonka knows what he's doing. He's not messing about. He's popping out the rule 13.7 G, not a word of a lie. The guidance, which is actually should be a rule, not just guidance, because it's not about interpretation. The player taking the stroke or the player defending it must not delay in the taking of the stroke. And then the other part, Wonka, if you want to be super thorough that you want to make sure that you include is the rule 13.9, which defines what the award is if the attackers fell. So it's sub C, any other offense by the player taking the stroke, the offense being taking too long to take the stroke, free hit is awarded to the defense. So thank you, Wonka. Glad you nailed that, as did Rachel. Good work. Can you guys start producing my show for me, maybe? That would be really nice. I'd appreciate that. Um, yeah, not me, obviously. That's not me, Mike. I, I don't ever try to help as a left back. I do all the time. I should shut up. Uh, Tristan, is the keeper moving before the umpire blows the whistle for taking too long an issue here? No. No. Okay, because it, that becomes an issue once the stroke is actually taken. And then you would be in a situation, if there wasn't a delay in the taking of the stroke, then you could deal with that with a green card or play advantage, allow the goal to be scored, if the goal is scored, all that sort of thing. So that's what you're looking for. And you flagged it with the emote. Oh yeah, there you go. See, that's, that's what's there. Okay, so now that we're very clear on the rule, um, I think it's, it's really commendable the way that uh, the umpire handled it here because, again, like I said, mentally he was kind of already under it. This is an intense game. Korea and Malaysia, it's fast, it's intense, and there's lots of tomfoolery going on. And in the moment, I think the movement of the goalkeeper may have triggered him to say, this is wrong, but why is it wrong? And a lot of people will say, well, now the, go now the defender is breaking early. The defender, the goalkeeper is moving early on the stroke. But if they're induced to do so because of a foul, either a feint or taking too long by the attackers, we shouldn't penalize that, right? And yeah, I, I'm totally gonna give away what I'm talking about next week, but think about say an indoor where we're talking milliseconds is the difference between being able to make a block and not making a block defensively. When those players are poised and they're ready to go and then they have to sit there for five seconds until the, before the injection comes, you know, the fact that they're gonna break is almost a given. So we need to understand that, have that empathy for what's going on with the players in this moment and deal with it properly. So there you go, let's see. Let's see what y'all think. Allie, how long is too long? I mean, it feels too long, but a rule of thumb. Um, this was five seconds. Other people have timed it, I believe them. I did a one 1000, it seemed about five seconds. And if, it fe if five seconds feels too long, five seconds is too long. This doesn't happen very often. And it, it's an interesting, thought to me that perhaps this should be part of our penalty stroke management protocol to put in our heads that we blow our whistle and we won 1000 to 1000 through in, in our head to, you know, to be aware of this because it's a big call. It's a stroke that is probably going to be a goal as it was. <laughs> and now it's not. So it doesn't get a lot bigger than that in terms of importance. So that is a note that I'm making to myself and I'm gonna think about it because is that important? Is it so important that you need to have that in your mind every time? Is it a good habit to build? I'll think about it and I'm, I'm interested to hear from you guys too. So there you go. Um, 
Dean. As an, uh, in your opinion, the attacker borderline faints a couple times already, so that would already constitute a free hit for you. Yeah, let's have a look at that. That's that's an interesting comment. Hard to say, but he's completely motionless there. So probably, probably not. If you're calling a free hit on that for faint, that's pretty harsh, I would say. Because they can't anticipate when the whistle is going to blow. If you heard, let me come back to the full so well. you can hear the... Um, okay. Now, hopefully you can hear it. Okay, as the players are getting set. That is why they've given it as a stroke. Listen to what Bevan says. Zhang Zhiyong, the goal scorer of the first and only goal. Starts on the whistle. To make it 2 Ladies and gentlemen, Hang on. No. ladies and gentlemen, I don't, even if everything else had gone pear-shaped, the fact that Bevan did that part properly to me, freaking hero, thank you very much for doing that right, instead of confirming and confirming. Ugh. I talked about it in episode 95, I think, uh, so five weeks ago, go back and have a look uh, at penalty stroke procedure. If you search the channel for penalty stroke procedure, I think I talked about it, yeah, about five weeks ago. But, um, and seeing it again, it, it, it looks, and that's part of our perceptions too, right? When we see something repeated numbers of times, especially in slow motion and, and that sort of thing, we tend to impart more importance on that. That's how brains work. So I'm, I'm really glad that you, you appreciate that yourself. Um, but yes, it's definitely too long. <laughs> so Luke, you measured it over five seconds, but generally if you blow your whistle, you're expecting the ball to be played. If you're counting beyond five, something has gone wrong. Yep. Absolutely. Taco, you use the same delay at the PC injection. Yeah. As you only release the, the PC if all players are ready. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's a very, uh, very productive way of looking at Taco. Good work. Um, there you go. The goalkeeper very much moves first, must be motionless until played. No, they don't have to be motionless. Motionless is a extremely high standard. They can't move their feet. And yes, the goalkeeper moves their feet, but do they move their feet because things are taking too long? This resettling, there's nothing wrong with that. And now he's dead still. He's dead still for like four seconds. And then he's thinking, oh, it's going to come because it's been so freaking long and he's ready to start moving. So this is not a goalkeeper moving too early situation. That would be an incorrect assessment of who is actually at fault. And why did the goalkeeper move? The goalkeeper moved because the penalty stroke taker was taking far too long. Oh, shush you, young lady. Okay, yes, let's just take a minute. For those of you who are traditionalists about these kind of things, let me get the thing. It is the 100th episode of What Up Wednesday. Stop. I celebrated 92, but thank you. It, it, it's not a bad idea to have a look at these things. Anyway, so there you go. I'm really squirreling out. Um, Yes, hi, SH. Awesome seeing local lad representing Wakato umpires on the international stage. I hope I said that remotely correctly. He's a top look. Yes, and I i mean, Bevan's been around for a long time and he's worked, worked his way up the ranks and he's been very patient and I really like a lot of the ways he handles this. Another thing to note, and I think Kat notices it, this too, is that he says too long, too long, but he's still not quite ready to pull the trigger on what the remedy is. What I really like is that he's got his colleague uh, over on the side and he can just calm himself down for a second, take that moment, go talk to him and he confirms. So what, yeah, it is. It is actually a free hit defense. And by, by taking that time and confirming, it makes it so much easier for him to sell and to continue on along about. And there's like, nobody can go argue with anybody else because the two umpires have 
have agreed. So I love that. Five seconds delay is a long time. Hundy, hundy, celebrate, oh, right. Yes. 92 is the number, bitches. Yeah. Okay. How did I last this long? We'll, we'll talk about this. How about we take any kind of questions like that? I, I love it because I'd, I'd like to talk about this kind of stuff. Content creation is really fun to talk about, but let's do this on the holiday show, shall we? We'll talk about, we'll kind of do a reflective of what's been happening with FH Empires and all this stuff and we'll, we'll do that. Um, there you go, Kat, you had an unsure moment last week and you wish you'd done what he did. Go him, yes. Yes, really like that. Let's celebrate at episode 54, two years of What Up Wednesday. Well, we're already well past 54. Oh, you're saying, wait, one, are you saying 150? 52, 52. Maybe you're saying 104. That's maybe what you wanted to do. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's the bionic knees. Yeah. No question. Okay. So if you haven't, make sure you get your vote in the poll right now because we are going to wrap this puppy up. Yes, 104. There it is. And I'm pretty sure I know which way y'all are gonna lean. So let's see what happens. And poll, I've done it. And this is our two minute warning. And we have 51% free hit defense, retake 31%. <laughs> Green card for the stroke taker, 14%. Goalkeeper, or sorry. Green card for the goalkeeper for moving, 2%. 35 votes, thanks everybody. Really appreciate that. So I think we, we wanna be careful about giving green cards to attacking players. And, and what I mean attacking is like, you're the, you're the team in possession. If a decision is, is if a team penalty is awarded against you, you're already taking a really big hit, right? And we, we really want to apply cards in times where a misconduct that's occurred needs to be, it needs to be penalized with a personal message. You need to send that message to say to everybody else, don't you do this again. It's bad for the game. Is it necessary in a situation where the attacking team has lost their penalty stroke? They don't just not get to take a penalty stroke, but the possession goes the other way and they go from probably scoring a goal to the ball going to the other team. That is a huge remedy. And that's why the umpire took so much time in that case. He's not gonna rush into that decision and potentially get it wrong. So when you think of it that way, I don't think that it's really needed to go that far with a card for the stroke taker. And yeah, you, you, you wouldn't trot out that green card until you had seen the shot go and then you had to remedy the situation. So if the goal was scored, you're probably not gonna call card a goalkeeper who moves early, therefore allowing the ball go, to go into his net. Cause again, he's not breaking down the play. <laughs> No, I'm in the middle of a thought. I'm, I'm thinking my thoughts right now. And why isn't it going back to my scene? I was thinking big thoughts. <sighs> no, I'm disturbed. It's about carding the goalkeeper. Yeah. So you don't stop a penalty stroke from occurring if you spot a goalkeeper moving, you you let that play. You let that split second continue. You let the shot go and see what happens and make your decision after that. I hope that helps. Alistair's late, it's okay. Dale Wicks, are we friends already? I don't know, let's do this. If it's your first time around, 
Very glad you're commenting. Isn't the just part of gamesmanship? If there was a time limit in the rules, you can understand the decision, but there isn't a time li limit, so. It's, and it's not that there is a specific time limit in the rules, but there is a rule. So if you as an umpire feel that the opposing player is put at a disadvantage due to that gamesmanship, and there's a rule saying you can't use this as gamesmanship, then you call it, okay? So I hope that helps, Dale. Yes, good luck, Shane. Good luck, Shane. Let's go. Why is it so white again? Okay. Alistair's just been at Wagner Stadium and he's making me very jealous. How dare you? Uh, Mike is thawing out, probably. Socking. Restart the warrior stuff with a bully. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, there you go. So, correct decision made. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Nichols there in that situation. And good luck to all of the gentlemen who are currently umpiring at the Nations Cup. Is it Pitchestrum Cat or is it one of the other locations in South Africa? I can't, I can't quite remember. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not doing appointments for this one, but I'm still keeping my eye on that. It was inconclusive as to which way it was going to go. This is getting so washed out. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, one mommy yo says, as a goalkeeper, I wouldn't have said that amount to time to take was so unreasonable to disallow the goal, but obviously you play at a much lower level. That's part of it too, right? What is considered a norm at one level is not a norm at another level. And it's 6.30 a.m. So you are in, where are you? Uh, are you must be in Australia. And yes, it's at Poch. Okay, cool. Good coverage. We're doing okay for, usually it takes me an hour to get through the first topic. So we're doing better. Okay. Here's topic two. And it's our first goalkeeper tackle. Hi. <sighs> Look, it's just every show has its own fun things. But there we go. East Coast Australia says Dale. That was, that's pretty good though. Look, for me just to hear the time of day and then to me say, oh, it's gotta be Australia, please. Um, let's see, uh, it, <laughs> foggy, it was, it was snowing and now I can see some blue sky. Calgary and your wild weather conditions, but don't worry. It still feels like it's minus 30 out there. So, um, let's see, there was Hoof, Hoof Athena versus Amsterdam. You went there with your kids to cheer Athena on for the first half. Um, they're in bed now. Oh, this is all good. Oh, Niels, where was the umpire? So um, when I watched the highlights of this whole game and really, you know, we're not here to drag umpires, but in this clip and then the next one I'm gonna show, we do see that there are several instances where this, the, the umpire who's in charge of this particular mission critical area in front of us has started far too far up the pitch, is ahead of where the ball is, and balls get intercepted, turned over quickly. These players, this is under 16, um, Tilburg and somebody else, they're fast. They're fast, and I would never <laughs> let any of them behind me to get between, in terms of attackers, to get to between me and the goal, because I would never catch them. So that's something to think about. Um, Tristan Tricky is asking for a stick tackle first by the keeper. No. 
Thanks for playing. <laughs> they are so quick. Cat knows because Cat's been umpiring at this level. She got under 18s last weekend. There you go. Um, for one mommy yo, you calling for PC. Oh, by the way, did the did you start the poll, Cat? Uh, the goalkeeper tackles absolutely fine, makes contact with the ball, but the ball goes onto the defender's foot. Oh. Huh. Well, thanks, Mama Yo, for seeing something that I didn't. God, now the poll's going to be all screwed up. And that's why the green player has her hand up in the air. Now it makes sense. Because I was like, okay, I don't want to give the poll away. Um, it's worth asking. Yeah, it's, I mean, look at what one mama yo just did. She, she or he or they figured out, I'm not judging by the name, um, f saw the, the ball onto the foot. I think only in that slow-mo, cause I sure didn't see it in the, in the fast. So let's see, as that's coming in. Let's see, maybe I can use, so that's a good stop. Uh, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. It's very close. Mamio, it's very, very close. It could have, it doesn't, it doesn't change direction from there. So I think she might have just got her foot out of the way. See? Is this going to show up? Let's see if this shows up on the screen. Of course it's not going to work. See? Tech. Darn tech. Try a different one. Nope. Derp. Anyway. And, you know, the interesting part could also be in this moment, was there any disadvantage? Did, did the ball change direction? Did it affect the way that the attackers could continue to play the ball? Like none of them were around at all. But what we do know is that the umpire wasn't close enough to make probably many decisions on this. So let's see what's happening here. Keep voting y'all cuz I'm going to I'm going to wrap this poll up pretty quickly so that we can get to the next one. There you go. There was also an attacking stick block before the collision. Uh tip from your son goalkeeper and ump. And Taco would be interested in in whether you're seeing this as a um Oh, because it's it's coming there. Yeah, that's a really good point too. It's possible, although we have the incorrect angle for it, that the defender here, she wraps her stick right around the body of the defender and very well could have committed a foul there, which would be a penalty stroke, which would have fixed everything. That there, I mean, that's a stroke if you don't feel that there's advantage. So it's, it's, it's difficult. I wanted to focus on the goalkeeper's actions though as well. But if you end up voting for a penalty stroke on this, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad because there's the, the attempt at the breakdown tackle there. I mean, you ain't never going to get the ball from there ever. Then there's a stick block. Then there is the collision, which could or which might be obstruction for you, which might not be. And then there's the potential foot. So this is a really complicated situation, which is kind of why mission critical positioning is so important. <laughs> so many things happen here. And I'm thinking that if this looks like what we saw later, the umpire has not been able to find themselves anywhere near this circle in order to be able to really give the most accurate decision possible. 
and then to sell it. Um, Yelp, the goalkeeper slidings can be dangerous and attract a tenement yellow card. Not sure if that's the case here, but for you, you lean towards that. Why? You'd go towards the penalty stroke from at least that angle. Why? What is this about? Describe to me and think it through. What does the goalkeeper do other than meet the ball where it's coming? They haven't come running from a different angle or over a large distance. She's literally taken two steps. One with the left or one with the right meets with the left goes down in a walk position. That's, that's hardly, that's, we don't have a definition of a slide, but it's not really slidey. So don't think that would be a problem. Uh, Nick, the attacker has her body and her stick ahead of the ball. You're happy with the goalkeeper's actions. So that's one way to look at it. What about the white defender tackle? Thank you, Alan. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. And, and Mike, if, if, if you go through all that, it would be, it would be a bully restart if you don't feel that there's a penalty stroke against the defender first. If you don't feel that there's a stick block that you can call the free hit defense or call an obstruction on the attacker for piling over. Although there's an argument that you can play on from this because it's only defenders that are around and, and that sort of thing. Um, it is a big mess. And that's why being proximate and having your whistle timing is so, so, so very important. If dodgy is, is, is a, is a word, but I talk to you guys, I mentioned this a lot that I want you to steer away from words that are just, this is bad, or this is dodgy, or this is nasty, or all the words that we tend to use for uh, tackles and be precise about your language. That was an attempted breakdown tackle. She tackled from a poor position with a very low likelihood of success and a very high likelihood of fouling. That is a breakdown tackle. Was it physical or dangerous? You know, not really. So those are the, those are the parameters we want to judge those tackles by. Not whether it's nasty or dodgy or anything like that, because that doesn't help us determine what needs to be carded and what doesn't. Okay. That's very important to have all flushed out. Okay. Sorry. And, and now all of a sudden it's gotten darker again. So I'm trying to turn on my lights. It's just, it's just ridiculous. You guys. Luke, if you hadn't seen the ball shielding from the attacker, you might be inclined to the penalty stroke. Very unclear who's done what. Okay. So how do we clarify this in our own minds? What are we looking for? We need to look at the defender. What the defender does, the goalkeeper, is take two steps, goes down, uses her blockers to block the ball that is getting brought straight at her. The attacker has the responsibility in this case to understand that a goalkeeper is allowed to go down, should go down in this situation in order to do the things that they are privileged to do in this game which is use their body to stop the ball on a shot. There is no way that a goalkeeper can make that save and avoid that collision at the same time. Look at it that way. If that's the easiest way of explaining it, there you go. And that means it's the attacker's responsibility. She just runs straight at the goalkeeper. There is no attempt to move her body around. She brings the body, the, her, she brings the ball straight at her and her body straight at her. You're not going to win that. Uh, Allie, it's tricky. She kept the ball on her stick like a magnet. Yeah. Defenders actually made no difference to her progression. That is arguable. Absolutely. <laughs> and the goalkeeper action was spot on. I'm going to stick the dodgy tackle part. You don't see the green player shielding. Looks like the ball is touching the stick. I don't like this. <laughs> Hi, Tricky. I don't like this particular definition of stick tackling that's becoming, that's in the briefing that everybody's repeating because 
just because you have your ball on the stick and then you take your stick into contact with another player doesn't mean that you're not shielding. You are blocking them from playing the ball. If you take your stick off the ball, off the ball, it's more obviously shielding. It's very easy to see that, but it's also, I could lead straight into you like this, boom, and block you from playing the ball and block you from an attempted tackle. That's still a shield. You know, you know when I go back to Maine that I really want to get my point across. You feel a bit weird about this one. The goalkeeper seems quite aggressive. Um, okay. Let me know if that if that makes sense. And Taco, hi to Alex and tell him good spot on the potential stick shield. I mean, it doesn't help when you try to go in with a goalkeeper because the goalkeeper is just going to... Because have done that. Uh, Dean, had the attacker fallen due to the defender's stick, is this considered reckless in a yellow card 10 minutes? It's definitely... Con I think what you would, you would do in this situation, because this tackle happens inside the circle, you have first the team penalty to think of. Okay, so always think of the team penalty first. It's a penalty stroke because it's intentional and reckless as to the result of committing a foul. And then the question is, do I need to add a personal message onto this? Was it dangerous? And so if you're, Dean, if you're adding the complication the, in the hypothetical, if the attacker had fallen due to the defender stick, could we then send a personal message? Potentially, yes. If this is not the first time we've had a penalty stroke for an intentional foul inside the circle, could this be a, a card? Yes. Okay, so those are two situations where you'd look at it. But what I hear in this, the yellow card 10 minutes, is a generalization of the language that if a, an attacking player falls down, it's a yellow card 10 minutes. That's not, that's not the criterion. You're thinking of a sliding tackle by a defender against an attacker as possession of the ball, which brings the attacker to ground. That's a mandatory yellow card 10 minutes. Everything else we have to think about and we have to add in more factors. Okay, you feel the goalkeeper did what it was expected. Yeah, it just seems pretty reasonable. Um, Mike, you only suggested bully because the umpire blew the whistle as the defender was running out of the D with the ball. Hence by that point, yeah, the only option in the absence of a VU or overturning play on, yeah, is a bully, absolutely. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's true. And, and this is, again, uh, Mama, you're really pointing out the, the, the use of the words, what words we choose to use. And I, I love these streams for this. And I love our discussions that we have in the server for this, because I get to understand what you're seeing and how you're feeling about what you're seeing by the words you deliberately choose. And I know you're not like, I want to convey this sense, but you are choosing the words that you truly mean because that's how our brains work. So when you say, was that aggressive, then, you know, it, it, it adds some flavor and meaning is, is that going to help us come up with the right call in this case? Maybe, but maybe not Matt, the, the penalty strokes caused by the defender prior to the goalkeeper. However, if the defender hadn't committed the penalty stroke, you believe the goalkeeper went to ground fairly. Okay. I understand that. And you see the shielding, says Kat. Yeah. Um, shielding from the defender or the goalkeeper. Shielding is an attacker foul. It's committed by the attackers. You almost missed the ball with the blockers. Could be argued for reckless, but just because... Just because he... Just because she almost didn't make the save doesn't mean that we now penalize what could have potentially happened. She moved, she moved with the ball to the ball, not from the side, not late. She didn't change her direction too late to, uh, to account for what the attacker's change of direction was. There were no changes of direction here. So, uh, looking like that, you take back your words. Take back your words, sir. You don't have to do that. Maybe the goalkeeper is still moving at the moment of contact, but she only set two steps. Yep. And that's why we really have to watch the defenders in all of these tackles, because 
it's a big fall the player goes plah and the stick and the everything and our natural reactions when we see a player in a vulnerable position like that is to want to try to protect them she needs to protect herself <laughs> um so may still be a penalty stroke for the previous fouls but the sliding looks fine okay totally fair um but would have been hard to see from the normal in person um well it depends on what normal is if you're taking mission critical positioning if you're taking mission critical positioning which you can find at FH Empire's MCP, mcp.com. I teach you where you would go in this situation and how you would have a great view. You would flash out, by the way, just so you know. ASMR element unlocked. Okay. Um, where are we? You see an attempted breakdown tackle and you see the goalkeeper making a legal tackle and gets the ball. You see the attacking player not making an attempt to move running the goalkeeper. So now your thoughts are a bully. Well, if you, what happens first and who is disadvantaged? Is there a disadvantage in this? So does the breakdown tackle disadvantage the ball carrier? And if I had seen that, I think I would have called a penalty stroke for the white defender, for the for the field defender. Um, your initial happy for a play on free hit, hit defense, then we're swayed and swayed back again. No, don't, because honestly, when it comes to what we would actually call, let me go back to this line that I say all the time. What's important is, are we looking at the principles? Are we exercising those in this framework so that when we are out on the pitch and we see something similar, we're going to apply the correct principles. So we're going to apply the principle of focus on the defender first. Where does the, the defender move in attempting to make their tackle? Was it expected? Was it fair? Were they late? Um, did they get the ball in the case of uh, field defenders? Uh, did their tackle have a high probability of success? Was there a big swing involved? Was there anything dangerous or physical involved? All those things, okay? So we're applying those principles to this. We also just happen to have a breakdown tackle, a shield, <laughs> and potentially a foot, as Mama pointed out, in there. So there you go. Yeah. Um, yep, now it's... <laughs> Rachel's onto the port, so you know it's getting serious. Ignore that the umpire blew the whistle and just judge what you're seeing. Yeah, and I think the umpire only stopped time because of the potential injury, unfortunately. Okay, get your votes in. I'm about to lock this one up. If you want to check on the attacker, restart with a constrained bully. <laughs> it should be. It should be a constrained bully in this case because the defenders definitely have the ball. So you would set up... Let's assume that, you know... The whistle goes as it does. Um, you know, this is where the whistle blows for the stop time. So you would bring that bully up to the 50 meter mark, and then you would instruct the attackers to hit the ball off the end line. <laughs> you would say, touch once, defender step back, attackers hit the ball off the end line. Now we have a 50 meter restart. That would be the best way to play this. Um, when is an a goalkeeper too aggressive that apart when the goalkeeper gets the ball in this situation, what would be too aggressive? Um, it would be that, for example, an, uh, a reckless slide where they are no longer in control of their movements and they move through the attacker be as a result of the momentum carrying through. That would certainly count as something that's reckless. That could be dangerous. If the ump was in the correct position, he would have missed some clues. That's the thing. Um, you well could have flashed out to see across. The okay, fine. Nobody's gonna buy the course now. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> uh, Nick, you had a penalty stroke for defender tackle, which disadvantaged the attacker. Same logic. Breakdown tackle results in a penalty stroke. Yeah. Yes, okay. That's fine. You think the white, yeah. And that's okay, right? So this is practice, this is exercise. It's all good. Um, of 
course you did, Taco. Of course you did. There you go. Yes, Ali. Um, but the attacker would have been shielding the ball from the goalkeeper, and that happened after what could have been the tackle by the defender. So there you go. Lads. Nails. I know it was an accident, so I'm not going to get mad. Uh, you guess where the white defender is while they're fouling the attacker may actually be preventing the attacker from moving right out of the There we go. There you go. Mama excellent excellent thought process there What changes how is that attacker disadvantaged because of that very low percentage highly reckless Potentially physical in other situations that tackle coming in She takes away space that she's not entitled to take because she can't make a successful tackle from there if she had just shielded or she had just sorry if she had just channeled that space with her stick down then that's different but because she reached in and that stops the attacker from potentially seeing other options to move good one um you'd hate to be the players waiting for the review of this one yeah there you go um, reckless can still be the case, but I don't want to give any, I, I don't want to get into a trap of, of saying a generalization that's then going to get misinterpreted. So, so now we have a decision that doesn't involve a penalty stroke. How do we sell it to the attack? Um, what decision would not involve a penalty stroke? Are you saying you'd, uh, you'd call a corner somehow or I'm not sure. Re the goalkeeper. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Mama. Mama, tell me, get, 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 get into the server. Let's be friends. And there you go. And you've changed to a penalty stroke too. Okay, so I'll end the poll and see exactly where everybody's at. Okay. Get this one out of here. And it's 51% play on, which is totally fine. Penalty stroke, 28%, totally fine. 20% penalty corner. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure I can see anything other than those two extremes. But I'm, we've had a lot of discussion sort of going through everything from now, so that's okay. If, you're, if, you're, if you had started with a penalty corner and now you're feeling differently, that totally makes sense. So, uh, we said the goalkeeper tackle isn't a penalty stroke, but penalty stroke for defense on attacker. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see the uncontested bully. How do you sell it to the attack? Well, your, your explanation is, or to the, did you have the ball when I stopped time? That's what I, that's how I sell it to the attack. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you about to score or did the defenders actually, were they running the ball out? That's not hard to, that should not be hard to sell. Like, are you fair? <laughs> Do you have a sense of how hockey plays? Like, that should not be a problem. Whatsoever. And that's the question I would ask. Did you have the ball? You didn't? The other team firmly had the ball? There's no pressure, no potential? Yeah. Uncontested bully. Easy. Um, there we go. Okay. Let's just see if there's any more. Mike, if you give me five minutes of material, looks to you like the defender stick movement is driven by the attacker hitting her hand sideways with her leg. Incidental for you. Okay. That's fine. It's not a great angle for that call, right? But if you had flashed up and you were looking down. Whoa. Whoa. Why is that so loud? Uh, so if you were flashing down, then yeah, that would, I think you would have the angle that you need to see what was there. And I mean, let's face it, a lot of things are a possibility in that whole scenario. Who knows? Was that the first? It was because as we go to this tackle, the second... Oh my goodness, I'm going a little slowly. Same game. 
Thanks so much to Taco for supplying this material for us. So as we were talking about the position of the umpire again, um, this turnover or, oh no, it was, a, it was a different play. But as this play was building, I saw this several times where the, the umpire is just, just way too high. And it makes me want to go over there and, and help. So what's your call here? Pull away, get voting on this one because this is again lots of stuff going on okay and i'm sorry but my final cut game on this clip is toy i did so well so toy <laughs> definitely enthusiastic goalkeeper in this game well she's doing her job right Dean, I like it. She's doing what she should do and she's making saves. So, uh, you love the player who gets a shot away, instantly appeals to the umpire for the previous play, talking about wanting two bites of the cherry. <laughs> uh, yeah, is this a thing that happens a lot in this level of play, Taco? Because I'm kind of concerned. It's the same team and they did the same thing again and it's like, what are you? Okay. What? Mm. Uh, for Allie, you think it's another lovely goalkeeper block. Alan G, it? Hi. I'm sure you probably meant to say something a lot more articulate than just it, but welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, Mama. The first keeper tackle looks fine. You should change your name. I just, I just don't know what to call you. I feel uncomfortable. It's also fine off the back line is defended off PC for the stick tackle. Just a PC? Just a PC for this one? Because you're talking about this right here, I think, Mama. I mean, you could. You could call a PC, but does the tackle have a decent likelihood of succeeding? I don't know. Again, this is not a great angle to see that. It's a great angle to see the goalkeeper uh, block. No question. It's not a great angle to see exactly what impact that stick has. Not that one, this one that reaches in right there. But again, it's, I mean, shave tackles, they seem like a great idea at the time, but they have a low probability of success. Oh, with two and positive play. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, the goalkeeper blocks the ball. Yeah, and and Alan, so so if you want to work through that a little bit more thoroughly, what you would work to yourself is, as I'm watching this potential contact point coming, is the goalkeeper moving in a reckless way that allows them to use their protective equipment in a way that presents danger to other players? So the long distance slide. Okay, that is, that is reckless. Am I seeing that? Am I seeing the goalkeeper move, just closing the timing of the space effectively? Are they in the space? Are they occupying it? Are they having to move in order to adjust to an attacker who's moving around them? Because if that's the case and the, at the attacker is trying to move around and then gets taken down by the goalkeeper, that's when we have a different story. So you're you're focusing on the goalkeeper's movement. That's absolutely correct. And that's very good. Yeah. Uh, she didn't mean to, but it was rude of the goalkeeper to stand on that attacker stick on the floor trying to make that second save. I didn't even notice that, but I was trying to watch all the other things. I don't remember ever flying over a goalkeeper, but then again, I've been a defender all my life, so maybe that's why. I'm thinking that second nibble is enough for the stroke. If it was just the first one, mom, I'd be going PC, but the second nibble where I don't think she gets much of the ball whatsoever. 
So for Nick, the PC, uh, goalkeeper save is fine. PC for the stick tackle by white four as a green attacker receives the ball. Uh, this level play, there's a big difference between teams and also boys and girls. Looks like there's, yeah. And for SH, the goalkeeper is down early play on. They are in the space that they are entitled to occupy as people who stop shots at goal and protect the goal from being penetrated by a ball. Watching the tackle in solo mo, the defender gets a lot on the ball and some stick too. Yeah, it's... So if you, if you, if you go with a penalty corner for this, I'm not surprised, but I don't know if I can justify. Either it's a clean attempted at tackle that just doesn't work, or it's a breakdown. I can't see how, like, it's just so hard. It's so hard. And Taco's going PC. Green player took the, the advantage. Every possible opportunity to play on. I, I guess one of the things that's... that's interesting is... do you feel the opportunity... Let's assume that this nibble is penalty stroke worthy for you. Is the opportunity that the player is presented with equal to or better than receiving the penalty stroke? If it's not, you have to give the penalty stroke. So being under pressure by two defenders, the goalkeeper getting back into position to block the goal, the angle at which the attacker's at, is that all better than a penalty stroke? If you believe it's a penalty corner, then you would look, you would have a lowered criterion, wouldn't you? You would say, is this shot better or equal to or better than the opportunity that's afforded by a penalty corner? So it's hard to say either way, but you know, would, would be as between the two. But that's that's the process you should be going through in your mind. How good is this opportunity shaping up to be? Rachel, it could be a penalty stroke for a white tackle and green, but advantage suggests there is little impact. Um, and attacker manages attempt. Yeah. And, and, and again, that means that there wasn't a foul. If the attacker isn't disadvantaged, then there is no foul, right? That's different than there being a foul, but the better result is to continue play. Uh -huh. I don't know. I didn't think it through very well, Taco, I guess. I was just trying to get this, this show together. Uh, the first defender's tackle is a PC. So on the very first, okay. And you've had many attackers fly over you. Yeah, probably. And the second defender's tackle is a PC as she gets the ball on the first tackle. Okay, moral story, blow early, avoid having 16 different things to choose from. Holy smokes, if um, there wasn't a true word said, say it again for the people in the back, please, Mr. Mike Mack. Mm, drop! Blow your whistle early. If you are playing advantage as a wait and see situation, I'm gonna wait to see what happens. And then I'm gonna go back through 15 fouls and figure out which one I'm actually gonna attribute the disadvantage of the situation to. You're pooched. You are absolutely pooched. And that's why whistle timing in the circle is crucial. And understanding the difference between many things can happen here to the ball is open. There's one possibility of what's going to happen here. Okay. Either the attacker has a decent shot of getting this or a decent opportunity to get the shot away. I can play advantage or not. Strokes for both, but defender's actions and not the goalkeeper. Okay. Hi, Purdy. <gasps> Hi. See? I can blow the DJ air horn for you again. Isn't that amazing? You don't think the first defender's tackle is a penalty corner penalty stroke. Slow-mo makes it look, look worse than real time. And that's a very fair comment, Dean. Not mad at you for saying that because that I probably wouldn't call... Yeah, and I'm just not sure how much disadvantage is occurring. So 
See, I'm listening to you guys. It's not like I just have it all made up in my head. I listen to y'all too. The second might be a PC. Uh, Mike, in real time, you don't think either set of players are expecting opponent stroke. You think it's a hard sell with such little contact. Early PC, both for the first tackle. That's kind of the interesting part and the problem we're running into now. I think there's been, if you watch the broadcast these days, the in commentators are getting better at outlining the criterion that it doesn't have to look bad. Again, that's why I don't like the use of the words bad or dodgy or whatever. That the only thing that has to be decided is whether that foul was intentional. And as we say all the time on FH Empires, is it intentional in the sense that it is reckless as to whether a foul is going to have a high likelihood of occurring that breaks down the play? That's what intentional means. So I think we're... Is there, is there a high likelihood for that shave tackle to come off? There's probably more of a, a likelihood than there have been in, in a lot of the other instances we've looked at. So maybe if I use my own language when I'm making my decisions, that helps me to get that right. <laughs> Purdy, join the Discord. That's right. And the shave tackle was okay to you, Tricky. Yeah, that makes sense. Hi, Steven. So make sure you rewind to the beginning. Nick, you think uh, you've blown PC for the stick tackle by four because you don't think it's a penalty stroke. The attacker's turning away from goal. So you can't see an advantage immediately. Okay. There has been a shift in the thinking recently that I just want to call your attention to, Nick, in that we're not looking... We used to really focus on the degree of opportunity that was being taken away. That's less of a factor now because the FIH is one as a very specifically encouraged us to get much more black and white about these decisions. And if it's intentional, it's a stroke. End of story. If it's intentional and the player was never going to score from the baseline, we're not supposed to take that part into consideration. It's just that it was intentional. Okay, so just keep that in your framing. I think it's important. So there you go. He missed a shot. And he'll see it on the replay squad. Mike, you'd probably stop time when the green player was down in the mouth of the goal. Yeah, um, I do zoom in so we don't really see too much of it. It's, it's hard to know. She's an attacking player and we don't, we, we can't see here whether she's been able to get up and get herself out of danger while her teammate is attempting to shoot. That would be really tough though, Mike. So how do you restart play? And are you taking away an opportunity for Green to score when Green is the player who's in danger? That would be a really tough one to work through. And as you see, with where when you see the zoomed out version, She's down, but then she moves enough off to the side and then the play moves around over to this side. And so she's really not quite right in the heart of the action, as it were. The ball's lifted, released for shot on goals, so the goalkeeper blocked the shot. Correct? Mm, it was a business dinner. Okay. Goalkeeper does well, both for the verse block and get... Oh, I mean, the, the mobility to get to the second save is amazing. You're going to go to PC for that. And an early blow. Yeah, I I think the fact that the 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 angle of the shot, I wouldn't want to play advantage on this. And I think she is disadvantaged the more I'm thinking about it and talking about it, I think she does get disadvantaged by those nibbles that come in from behind that don't succeed. Is her stick being obstructed? You still have to see that there's disadvantage with that contact. I might be talking in circles a little bit, so I apologize, but there you go. Um, the shave the shave lifted the ball. Oh, okay. You were saying that the, the shave lifted the ball. Yep. Yeah. And it depends, it depends if there was stick contact there. So I will allow both. It totally makes sense. And you didn't use the word dodgy. I know, Nick. See, you're catching on. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. And here I was, 7 p.m. last night, thinking, man, 
I don't have enough material for a show today. 100th show and I might not even go live. That's what I was thinking. I was really worried, you guys, honestly. Sometimes it's, it's hard. So what do we got? We got a play on for 55%, which may be advantage now that I think about it. Penalty stove for 27%, penalty corner for 17%. So kind of the play on and penalty stroke can kind of almost be the same one if you think that that shot that the attacker had was equivalent to a penalty corner. So I can understand that. It's it's a tough one, isn't it? Like the more the more you watch it, the more you, you start challenging your own conclusions and your own assumptions. And I really appreciate everything that everybody threw in there because I wasn't, uh, I, 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 I'm glad that I didn't get too entrenched in what I was thinking. Yep. So hard. And we've been watching this replay for about 200 times. You're absolutely right, Allie. And we have to make the decision in the instant. And again, it just kind of all goes back to positioning and movement, doesn't it? And that there are, you know, there's, there's probably four, again, just like the first one, there's probably four decisions you have to make in that moment. And if you are far away from four decisions, you're giving yourself far too many opportunities to mess that up, basically. I know I don't need that many opportunities to give myself bad, bad positioning before one or two or all of them end up getting messed up. That's your point too. You look in the clips in slow-mo. Yep. Absolutely right. Good point, Dean. And Luke, the more you watch it, the more you're certain the goalkeeper was not the problem in either of the clips. Good job, goalkeeper. You're great. So let's see, what do we got? We got seven minutes. Every time, you guys. Every time. Okay, we're just going straight into the goalkeeper removing their helmet. This is going to be a quick one, right? Right? There's no video on this, but this was a question that was put on a um, forum. And uh, the question goes to this. The ball is in play and the keeper takes off their helmet. Is this an offense? They're sure that playing the ball without the helmet is an offense, but if the ball is in the other half, is it an offense? Keeper of the weekend was told by the opposition it's a cardable offense. Umpires said nothing. Uh, new poll. Thank you, Kat. Oh, you're doing so good today. Ooh. Mm. Because we all know. Wait, let's play this one. Can't hang with the big dog, stay on the porch, blow the whistle. Okay. Nothing like a 50-year-old white woman wrapping along to too short. Okay. Vote on the poll quickly. <laughs> hey, that's a good point, George. No, no mulligans, no do-overs. Get your decision in there quickly. And then we can see. Okay, so I'll just run through the rule so that we're all on the same page, okay? 4.4 reads that the goalkeeper must wear protective equipment comprising at least head guard, headgear, leg guards, and kickers, except that the headgear and hand protectors can be removed while taking a penalty stroke. Okay, so that's 4-4. And then if that wasn't hot enough for you, check out 10.1. A goalkeeper must not take part in the match outside the 23 area, blah, 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 except when taking a penalty stroke protective headgear must be worn by a goalkeeper at all times except when taking a penalty stroke so if the play is going on and a goalkeeper takes off their helmet say in their own half and hopefully not outside their 23 because now you've got all kinds of things to have to manage what do you want to do so i'm going to close this poll really quickly okay and make sure Depends on why, says Purdy. No idea what the specific rules say. Ha, that's why I'm here. Uh, if the helmet is off while the half, yeah, there should be no issue. And Taco says play on, no one is disadvantaged. Uh, I feel like there's some context. There's always context missing from Facebook posts. Was the keeper playing the ball? No, it was at the opposite end of the pitch. So if we go back to this tricky, it's, um, oops, I'm, 
putting all the wrong ones up. Okay. Keep, okay. If the ball is in the other half, is it an offense? Uh, do you download Discord on your work laptop so you can join the tailgate? Is that a rhetorical question? Because obviously we do a tailgate in the Discord after the show so you can talk back at me and yell at me and we hang out. The impact on the game is non-existent. A card seems a bit of an overreaction, even if the rules say it must be worn. Says, oh my God, Dan, I'm sorry. I was calling you Dean. Ugh, I'm a terrible human. I apologize. I should have seen the, the two A's. Allie, to be fair, you rest your ears on your head. You never take it totally off, right? Do we want to start adjudicating as to whether on requires that it has to be fully over the chin? What if a goalkeeper, like, can you perch it on your nose? I don't, I don't know. I'm not a goalkeeper. Yes, it violates the rules, says Steven. It do, no, it doesn't matter until the ball's near them, until there's some actual danger. Um, this is up here with the goalkeepers popping the ball and booting it upfield with their kicker and then looking over at that look. Go on then, make a decision. They're always pushing the envelope, aren't they? I love that one. Card the other player for inciting discourse. Okay, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end this poll. And I'm gonna two minute warning this. And I got this and this. 75% say play on. 16% uh, want to stop time and verbally warn the goalkeeper. Card the goalkeeper immediately 8%. I'm going with the 75% uh, because there is zero impact on the play. And I got 99 problems when I'm out on the pitch. And goalkeepers walking around their circle or inside the 23 and, you know, perching their helmet up on their head or maybe even taking it off, ain't one if the ball's in the other end. I might do something if I happen to notice and look over and say, wow, you know, you're a lot better looking when your helmet's on. <laughs> I might make a dick comment like that, okay? But would I card a goalkeeper? Is it an offense? An offense has to disadvantage the opposition. Okay, so there's no offense to call here, but could there be a personal penalty? Why? 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 Don't, just don't worry about it. And definitely restart with a bully. Ha, how you like that? Um, Ali, here, oh wait, Alistair, how likely is the scenario that a goalkeeper takes their helmet off and the defending team makes an amazing aerial straight into the other half and the goalkeeper's off fumbling? Um, never. <laughs> it honestly, the one thing that goalkeepers are pretty good at doing is yelling at their defenders if an aerial is, like, no, no. It, I, honestly, it just doesn't happen, so I don't worry about it. Have a word and opportune moment, yeah, like, Literally, make the comment. <laughs> Dan, you are welcome to come back anytime. Whoops. What happened? Really? Is this what's going to happen to my whole... My camera has disappeared. Just give me a minute. You can hear me, so you know everything's okay. Hi. I'm back. I'm black as anything. This is very, very dark. I honestly just don't know what's happening in my world. So let's just, let's just recenter this. Hi. Welcome back to what happened to my scene, Ecamm? And I don't know. And so anyway, as I was trying to say, Dan, you need a percentage of how on your helmet must be. Does it need to be 51%? I don't care. I really don't care. I don't care. As you said on the Facebook post, yeah, Stephen, I saw you posting on this. 
If you're over a vicious wanker over a thing like this, you'll only piss off the players and remove enjoyment from the game, which is against an umpiring goal. Yeah. Like, just because you know it's against the rules doesn't mean you get to prove it to everybody. Nobody cares. The one thing we're good at doing, yeah. I know, I know. Then you'll change your vote to play on. Okay, that's all good. You've taken your helm out before while the ball's in the other half, but only to adjust it. You only you only take it off when there's no chance of danger to yourself or the goal. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think goalkeepers need to be, you know, if, if they're at an age where they need more guidance and help with that sort of thing, then you're, you're not gonna whip out a card on a 12 year old kid who is struggling with their helmet and their straps kind of loose and things like that. Like you're gonna handle that situation totally differently because you're not an asshole. Yes, it's that one. I forgot to play it. it probably, who knows? I don't know. If there were cards given for taking off a goalkeeper's helmet, you'd have a card every week. There you go. I know, so many keepers. I feel really in the minority here. Okay, 132, should I do one more? Let's see, was this one entertaining? Yeah, let's do this one. What do we do with this? I'll save the other three for next week. Chest, and it has not been blown away. Wow. Oh no, that is why we have got one extra player. Steven, you and your puns. Okay, what's going on, friends? What is going on here? What do we do with this? New poll, get your answers in. And tell me, what the Sam Hill are we going to do with this? Left defender's rule. That's right, Dale. Team left D over here. Hashtag team left D. You're going to pad up for next week. That is a sport ball. It is a sport ball. It is the sport ball of rugby or anything like that. Uh... I think, I sorry, um, P. Clifton, Clifton, I, I see where you're going with the penalty corner. Um, I'm not sure I would award any team penalty here because I think the aerial is gone and away. I think that it isn't uh, in question anymore. And my sting is playing, and I don't know why, but that's okay. Let's just ignore that. And I think the contact happens. The ball is inside, but the disadvantage occurs outside the 23. And then the player falls inside. So I think you'd be in tough to give a penalty corner. You'd have to be very confident that that player was, was going to catch that ball. And for George, he agrees that it's outside. Um, yellow card, 10 minutes, pushing red card. Which one is it? Vote now in the poll. Foul finishes in the 23 to sell the upgrade to the PC, as that's the right thing to do. It's only the right thing to do if that guy's gonna catch the ball. And you know what the best way of knowing if that ball's gonna get caught? Like, the best thing is to not be Oh, it's so hard, but the first time I saw this, I thought, first of all, if I'm coaching this umpire, we're going to have a pretty tough dis discussion here because I feel that there are times when our decisions, where we are positioning ourselves, actually puts us or puts players in the position where they take liberties just like this because they're like umpire's not here i'm gonna get away with this one it's not good enough just to catch these things we want to be 
managing the game in a way that sends a message to players that they're not even going to try this. And even from the little blip of the commentators that I heard before this actual scenario occurs, leads me to think that there have been things that, you know, may have been contentious that were going on. And I am never going to be starting if that ball is turned over with young men and it's at the 15 opposite, I am sprinting with everything I have. And I don't think that was a fast turnover. I am, that umpire there is not, is only one quadrant ahead of that play. And with an aerial ball, that's not far enough. You need to be ahead. There's tons of space on the pitch. You don't have to be close. You've got a collie to take the backside of the play. You have to be ahead of this. And you have to see this aerial dropping in front of you. And you have to be looking at the faces of these players, knowing what's coming. And would that change something? Potentially, maybe. Not a PC, free hit outside for just the outside the 23 meter. Um, for Clifton, we don't do um, sport ball references. We have video referral or video review. We do not have assistance. Okay, foul finishes in the 23s to sell the upgrade. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if you can. You're torn between the five and the 10 because the impact is lower as the ball is gone, but it's overly physical. Doesn't look like hockey to me, contact outside. Ha, how you like that? No. Mm, drop. This isn't hockey. It's not hockey. That guy's not catching that ball. It's gone. And that is not contesting or competing for the ball. Vote now or forever hold your peace. I'm going to end the poll in a sec. It's a red, but not a PC for Allie. Allen would be a yellow card in rugby for a no arm tackle. No effort made to play the ball. Yeah, Allen, it, it's really tough if we start our analysis from the vantage point of looking at what another sport would do. That's not our sport. And we don't have arm tackles or no arm tackles or head tackles or any kind of, we don't have body tackles. That's not our game. So as soon as we start introducing that thinking, we're just going to get things more confused for ourselves. Looks like the attacker has given up the chase. Did the, and for tricky agrees, slowing down, accepting it wouldn't make it. Yeah. The ball wasn't moving that fast. You might've got there. Okay. But it's still not competing for the ball, is it? Yeah. Don't sell the decision from 50 meters behind the play. For Dan, should have been ahead of the game. Yeah. And we just, there's lots of space. When you see this breaking out, there's lots of space there and, and there's there's no reason why you can't be further ahead. You, you don't need to be proximate to something that's happening in that midfield area, especially if your colleague is doing their part and they're getting over and they're going to take care of that sideline backside of the play for you. No reason at all. Yellow card 10 with no thought of the safety of the other player, not a red card. This is an isolated foul. I'm going yellow card 10, but in the context of the game, may up to a red card. See briefing for what's red carded, um, considered a red card offense. Show me the briefing where it talks about yellow, red cards. Maybe it's an England hockey briefing, but it's not in the FIH briefing. There is no mention of red cards in the FIH briefing. It's borderline from this resolution. You can't tell the players looking at the ball, looking at the player. And for Alistair, the ball was very far away, so this has nothing to do with hockey. The body check is clear. Red card. Okay, ending the poll. Two minutes. And 
we have 60% going with the yellow card, 10 minutes, red card, 27, green card, six, yellow card, five minutes for 6%, okay? Uh, I can understand all of this, but for me, this needs to be a red card because it is not part of the play. It is not competing for the ball. And just because they're both running in the direction of the ball doesn't mean that's competing for the ball. He just body checks him. And it's physical and it's dangerous. I, I don't, I, I can't see any reason why this wouldn't fit a criterion for a red card. And I'm the one here week after week when everybody else is shouting for red cards because somebody, you know, makes a tackle in a dangerous way. At least they're bloody trying to make a tackle. They're trying so in a reckless and dangerous manner. But for me, that's where the line is drawn. And when you're doing something that isn't hockey, you don't get to play hockey anymore that day. And potentially for whatever period of time it is in your jurisdiction. That's the logic to me. If you're not playing hockey, you're done. Remove yourself from the field. The door is over there. Okay, so I'd see a yellow card for 10 minutes and be disappointed that it wasn't enough. And that is what I have to say about that. Okay. Um, that was all the sounds. Yeah, I did that. You gave a, a red card, Nick, uh, for a tackle not dissimilar when the attacker ended up with a buster collarbone. Yeah. And the crazy thing is knowing these colors is Edinburgh Uni versus Edinburgh Uni. Nice not. Might have been. The late um did it smart um, yet by staying behind. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, there is this thing. Have you done this part? Do that part. Um, closer than that. I, I, I can't, you know, you know that I can't, but, that, but that's not even a, you can't shoulder charge. <laughs> like, I, I just, I, I don't see how that needs to be how that can be considered part of the game. At all. There's how playable that ball is, and that, that counts a great deal towards the team penalty and a little bit, or to some degree, to the personal penalty. Okay. And yes, the tailgate's starting. So says the lady in red. So, ick. Uh, that would be starting a 30-day ban for the red for the EH. Ask you how you know, Luke. How do you know, Luke? Yes. How do you know? How do you know? Correct. Okay. So, interesting thoughts. I'm surprised more people didn't go for red on that one, but that's okay. And with the way that I've been thinking about red cards for years... And the language that I use to describe what an automatic red is, violence offered again, or offered or committed, or the other criterion, uh, to me is that outright violence that doesn't have to do with the game? Yeah, I, do, I, I think so. And even if it's not a, a stick being swung at his face, it's not a punch, that is... Yeah, that just doesn't qualify as hockey. At least a swinging stick could be going for a ball <laughs> in some remote case. I don't know. Not at the receiving end. There you go. There's no clarification required. It's a rugby tackle. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to think about that more because it's important to me that so many of you disagreed with that being a, a red card 
I thought there was going to be a lot of people going just, oh yeah, that's a red. So I'm going to think about that more. And if you're interested in talking about it, additionally, we do have a discord where you can, you can talk about those things and it's here, fhmpars.com forward slash discord. Come join us. Uh, we're really nice and super popular and we do really fun things. Just kidding. And we're going to be going to the EHL next year. So you want to get in, get a part of that. If you're interested in the FH Empires 13, come talk to me and ask more questions about what it involves, what kind of results people in the yellow group in particular are achieving, because I am extremely proud of how well so many of them are doing. And yeah, it's just kind of the joy of my day. Thanks very much for joining in. And keep bringing all your questions and your energy and your conversation and your wisdom. And I look forward to seeing you next week and see you in the Discord.